Call, please. Penelope Carson. Here. Henry Berry. Here. Carol Fritz. Ruth McClary Watson. Here. John McGinty. Here. John Roberts. Present. Ann Swift Kayata. Here. The town clerk is not present. The manager is, and the student representative, Kristen Alaya. Here. And Jamie Clucci is absent. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Will we have the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number 45. Consideration to enter into executive session to discuss a potential purchase of land and buildings within the town. Any such discussion in executive session would be limited to aspects of the issue that might prejudice the competitive or bargaining position of the town of Cape Elizabeth. The, uh, there are two parties that would like to make comments about this. I would like to caution everybody that this is not a public hearing. This is generally not the time for the public to speak. Uh, this is just a public meeting. And because that, and we are going to have people, a couple of people speak here to give us the, their comments, it isn't appropriate also for the council to be questioning members because this is not the time to get into a debate because this is not a public hearing. But we are anxious to hear comments from the people involved. And I uh, did this alphabetically, so I would like to ask uh, George Gagnon, who is the a tenant in the property, to give his comments because you, you wanted some time, didn't you, George? Yes. Uh, or his attorney? Yeah, my name is John Perkins. John, why don't you come over here so that the, uh, the, t the audience at home can um, hear you and see you. My name is Don Perkins, and I'm a lawyer representing Palm Cove Millwork and, and its president, George Gunn. Uh, I'm also a resident of Cape Elizabeth. And uh, my comments will be quite brief. In the first place, uh, uh, Palm Cove Millwork, uh, as run by George Gunn, has been across the street here since the early 80s. Uh, and they've been a good uh, corporate citizen in the town. Uh, five years ago, the town, one of the town's representatives asked them to build new drawers and desks out in the office there. And that was done to the extent of some $12,000 worth of work without charge. Uh, they gave $12,000 to the sea rescue unit. Uh, they painted out the metal cabinets for the fire department at no charge. Uh, they put an ad in the annual uh, booklet for $150 a year. They gave the Boy Scouts $1,800 for a trailer. And they put up a sign for the lighthouse at the town's request. In another dimension, uh, they make quite a contribution to the economy of the town. Uh, uh, Jonesy's uh, garage here supports their 20 vehicles. Of their 60 employees, some 25, roughly 25, daily buy lunch from the IGA. Barthel's upkeeps their vehicles. 60 people, 60 employees use the banks. Um, and uh, these employees buy lunch and gas at Cumberland Farms. So their presence here in the center of Cape Elizabeth uh, is, is quite significant. Now, it is the fact that uh, the Murrays, owner of this real estate, and Palm Cove Millwork, the tenant, are uh, having a struggle over their future relationship, whether further lease or purchase. And uh, they've had struggles before over the some 40 years in which they've had a relationship. 
uh, and at least up to now, they've always resolved those things uh, and gone on. Uh, both parties benefited. And I would submit to you that it's not a good idea for the town uh, to get in the midst of that struggle between the parties. On October 2, uh, Mr. Gagnon made a counterproposal to the Murrays, uh, which is very close to the price they're asking based upon an appraisal which has not been shared uh, with Mr. Gagnon. But it would be my expectation that these parties will rank uh, absent intervention by the town uh, because then I don't know what happens. But absent that intervention, I would anticipate uh, that these parties will struggle and cut a deal as they have several times in the past and go forward. And the town will have the benefit and the economic uh, benefit of, uh, of Pond Cove's uh, tenancy in that property. Now, Finally, uh, well, and, and in that regard, uh, to the extent there was a comment in the press about blood, bad blood between the parties, I would not describe it that way. Uh, these business people have wrangled for years, and that's not unusual, and I don't call that bad blood. And each time in the past, they finally cut a deal, and they've gone forward to their mutual benefit. So I don't see this as a bad blood situation. Now finally, uh, I'm no architect or engineer, but I did walk through that building with Mr. Donyon uh, yesterday morning. That building started out as a barn, and it has had several uh, additions of manufacturing space, uh, which are really quite rough and ramshackle. And the suggestion that somebody's going to go in there and turn that into quality office space seems very doubtful to me. I'll bet you that the ultimate conclusion will be tear it down and build some office space where things are plumb and, and where the various uh, utilities and whatnot are proper properly built into office space as opposed to hanging out as they are in this manufacturing space. So I would suggest to you, and now, I also understand that, that the town has some alternatives of where they might put office space. Uh, you own the garage property across the way. Uh, behind you here, I understand that uh, uh, Mr. Cogsall, uh, had a conversation with the town manager about whether there was any interest in buying that property, and the answer was no, there really isn't, we don't have any money. But that would be a much more practical site than what's being discussed here. I also understand that the Tinsman property right down the street, uh, which is already office space, and, and which in terms of land area is a little less, but comparable. That building could be doubled if, if, if need be. Uh, and you've got there far cheaper property, uh, already office space, and susceptible of uh, being developed further. So I, I think if you look at your several choices here, the property that is the subject of this discussion will turn out to be a real money bath for the town. Now, as I understood the chairman, uh, it's not the format in this meeting to ask questions, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. This, this, yeah, because it is not a public hearing, but. Would, would, would Mr. Gagne like to speak as well? This is your, his chance to speak, um, if he would like to comment uh, directly to us. I think, Other than, I think we've covered it. You've covered it. Okay, fine. And Mr. Murray, you 
like an opportunity to speak? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, episode has been very unfortunate for everybody concerned. It started back in 95. At, up to that point, we had a good relationship when we tried to originate the first lease after he purchased the property. It was a complete disaster. He did a number of things that were actually illegal, and I should have done something at the time, but, but I didn't at the time. It's gone by now, so there's no sense of going about that. He delayed the uh, lease by three months at that time, stretched it out, it, just in dickering and bickering, and we had to try to negotiate it, and we finally did. But even his own attorney said he has a difficult client. Now, the, uh, as far as the employees of the building, as far as I know, there's only one employee there that lives in Cape Elizabeth. The rest have fallen out of town. I think he has contacted a good percentage of the number of people in town, I don't know how many, and he's insinuated that he'll be going out of business if this goes through, if I sell the property to the town. That is not true. It's not true at all. He's a businessman. He has a very successful business. He can well afford to either go out and purchase another building or lease another building. Uh, this is not going to affect him except the expense of doing that and the expense of moving. The other thing about the whole proposition is that if he had agreed to the first purchase price that I offered him, his monthly payments would have been less than he's paying for a lease now. So I have not been very unreasonable with him. And I was, in, I was willing to carry the mortgage for him. So he would not have had the expense of going through a bank and all the uh, points and all that stuff that he had to go through. So i just let you know I'm not as unreasonable as they try to make me think. The uh, counter proposal that he stated, uh, that offer was made after the town had shown an interest and said they were definitely interested in the property. Before that, he was not interested in even considering a price above 425. He wouldn't even talk, he wouldn't even consider anything. You couldn't even negotiate at all. That was his firm price, but when he found out somebody else was interested, then he decided to come up with his price. The price he offered, he will tell you that it was $520, uh, $558. It was not. It was $525 with six months lease added to it. It's strictly a deal where he was going to try to add the continued lease payments into the cost of the property. The, uh, the bad blood, uh, there has been no question about bad blood. Uh, I don't know whether you want to call it that or not. There has been some disagreement. And to me, he's been a very unreasonable tenant. Now, the number of things, I don't know whether how many people he has told about a number of things that need to be done on the building, how the building is in terrible shape. The only serious thing I can think of that that building needs is there are some roofs that need to be shingled. The two sections that I think of, the rest of it, sure, roof shingling is all part normal maintenance. It has to be done periodically with anybody, your home or anybody else. So those are items that, uh, and he had all these, had, everything had to be done at once. That's not true. The, the roofs can, part of them need to be done, part no. Uh, the cost of items he listed in there were windows. One of the things he said, it needs all the windows. It doesn't need all the windows. The windows are fine, and they got custom windows on the outside. It's just that he stated that they should be insulated windows, the new modern insulated ones. So here again, we, uh, uh, he's, he's stressing things that aren't true. Uh, there are a number of other things, but I won't get into the details on that. The building, he stated, is, is roughshod and ramshackled. Most of you, unfortunately, couldn't get through. The few that did go through were, saw the whole building. They saw exactly what the building looked like. The building is not ramshackled. The majority of the building is new within the last uh, 30 years. And that's not very old for a building. Sure, the barn is old. The barn is, and the house itself are some 150 years old. And that's the best part of the character of the property, is the age of that building and the, and the shape it's in. It's in fine shape. Uh, the, uh, I don't know where he gets the ramshackle part of it. The property is well uh, available to be reconstructed into or remodeled interior. The outside doesn't need to be touched. The inside can be remodeled into whatever you want. It's a wide open space. 
and it's unlimited what can be done with it. I had another client before I involved with the town that was somewhat interested, but he wasn't able to pull the things together in time, uh, and he, I wasn't able to make any connection with him, so, uh, but he was definitely interested and, and might be in the future if this falls through. Uh, I, I don't know of anything else that I need to state except that I'm concerned about the things that he has contacted the local people in town and told them about losing a business in town. It's my understanding that uh, this property, uh, when it's, uh, the town buys it and, and utilizes it, if they move the operation of the uh, services that they have in there, that they can make money instead of losing money with the property. The uh, value of the, insur the real estate taxes, I think, are some $9,000 in that vicinity. Uh, they would be the money they would gain back by uh, the operation that uh, Sue runs. I think she could probably increase that considerably, but I don't know for sure. So I think, uh, and another, just to give you an idea how I'm not as tough a landlord as you might think for, uh, there's two spaces in the property now that uh, he is utilizing that he's not paying any rent for. There's the basement of the barn, which sure, it has a dirt floor in it, but he probably has $20,000 worth of paint stored down there, and I haven't asked him to pay any rent on it. Uh, there's a garage there between the house and the barn that belonged to the apartment upstairs uh, that uh, it was the way they parked their car. Without notifying me or asking me, he just took that garage over, put an overhead door in it, and started using it for storage. I know he did it. I saw it after it was done, but I didn't complain about it. Uh, so he's utilizing that space. So I'm really not the hard-hearted landlord you might think I am. So I think that's about all I need to say. I think I've covered most of it, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, it's now time for the council to uh, consider going into executive session. The statement that I, met, that I read off the item number 45 is taken directly from the... Um, Revised statute, candidates statutes from the state of Maine, and I'll repeat them again. Any such discussion in executive session would be limited to aspects of the issue that might prejudice the competitive or bargaining position of the town of Cape Elizabeth. So now, Councilor Ruth Watson. Madam Chair, um, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I would like to um, ask um, if we may find out that the, who the individuals are in this room and um, you know, not have them speak, but if they're stakeholders on one side or the other. I'd just like mean, to know who's sitting here and what they're, if they're, who are they supporting. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that's appropriate. I, that's, I don't, that's people don't done. have to, I, I think that that's, I think, I'm sorry, but I think it is an inappropriate. Um, um, I, get, I can determine it from a position in the room. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> we, we can tell you about that. Yeah, we can tell you. <laughs> um, it. I'd, I'd like to say that Councillor Roberts is standing up. He recently had back surgery, and he can sit for only short periods of time. I just wanted the public to know, while they may be only seeing his necktie and not his face <laughs> on the TV screen. <laughs> and now I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session, please. Uh, so. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Oh. Uh, I move to go into executive session. Uh, to consider. Consider the, what, what's that? It's. Oh. <laughs> to discuss a potential purchase of land and buildings within the town. Second. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. I, I, um, I, I don't know whether this is one minute, 20 minutes, half an hour, or what. We have not, as a council, had an opportunity to sit down to discuss this uh, opportunity that was presented to us. So we will be back, of course. So I guess you'll be off the air until we come back. Is that what you do? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>